What are you gonna ask me? Yep. No, sounds good. And I'm looking at you. Perfect. Morning, right. Uh, My name is David Ford. Sorry. My name is David Four. I'm a master of wine living in Barcelona, though I'm originally from Canada and lived for a long time in the United States. I think that the wine industry is stuck in this normal distribution channel, this normal way of messaging that they've been doing it for decades. And I think, as we saw in ProVine last week, that there's thousands and thousands of the wine trade all competing in the same place, trying to get their, their wines to the market in the exact same way, competing with each other. Why can't we do it differently? And you have this situation where uh, producers are making wine, producers make wine with passion and their message is getting diluted on the way to the consumer. And why shouldn't the, the producer be able to communicate directly with the consumer in a way that describes their passion for their wine? And so in that way, I think there is, the wine industry is ripe for distribution in terms of their path to market and communication. Marketing, of course, is important with every product, but you have to, with wine, realize that everybody's marketing it in the same way, and there's so many voices and there's so much competition for uh, the, the consumer's attention, for everybody's attention through the distribution. You've got to not just place importance on marketing, but you've got to place importance on doing it in a different way. If you're the same as everybody else, you're going to fail. I think you need to be unique, but you still have to be authentic. You have to be genuine in the message that you're, you're communicating and that the way that you communicate it, you can't just say, for, for example, a producer or distributor can't just say, oh, we need to have a social media presence. We need to have a social media strategy. You have to be authentic with it and you have to be genuine in the way that you communicate it. Well, I think if, if uh, the fine wine world, which is where most wine lovers and wine experts and wine community hangs out, would pay attention to the producers at the, say, lower end of the, of the price bracket, the lower end of the consumer market, if they could pay attention to, for example, the gallows of the world, the way that they market it and the way they communicate, they're honest with their customers. They are giving the customers what they want and they're messaging to the customer in the way that the customer wants to hear. I think we could all do well to pay attention to those producers. If you don't have very precise branding, if you don't have branding that is true and honest and most importantly powerful and that people can hear and listen to, you are not going to make it. You're going to have a really tough time. You're going to be in amongst a crowd of people trying to differentiate yourself. And so, yes, you have to be super, uh, so yes, you have to be super attentive to your branding, but at the same time, just don't be in a committee room full of people trying to figure out, oh, what should our branding be? You actually have to figure out honestly in your soul, what are you trying to make? What kind of product are you trying to make? And what consumers are you looking for and how uh, do they want to hear that message and build your brand around that? You know, you can always get a consumer to try wine once, but if the quality isn't there, they're not going to come back to it again. Now, but at the same time, we don't pay enough attention to what the average consumer is looking for in their product. We, we, we are stuck in our snobby world of fine wine, especially when it, when it relates to consumers at the, at the non-high end of the spectrum. I don't want to say lower end of the spectrum because I don't want to denigrate them. I'm saying consumers that are not spending the same kind of money that the rest of us wine lovers and wine experts are. Well, your, your presentation, your label, your package is all about your brand messaging and you have to structure your package to relate to your brand messaging. They have to be the same. It does you no good to make a sophisticated, elegant, I'm from a Grand Chateau package on a seven pound bottle of easy drinking wine. You have to have them match together. And so there has to be thought into doing that. But at the same time, you can't just be the same as everybody else. You have to figure out a unique way to convey your brand message. 
Well, I think competitions often are a place where brands can figure out, oh, okay, we've got a silver or gold medal at this competition, and it will help with their promotion, not so much their brand. And I think to develop your brand, you have to go to places like the London Wine Competition, where you've got the package playing an important role in the overall judgment of the wine. If you have an excellent wine, and if you have an excellent wine for the price of your wine, it still doesn't do any good if your consumer looks at it on the shelf and goes, oh, I, I, I don't want to buy that no matter what the price or whatever the, the quality of the wine. Package is essential to the consumer. And if you actually listen to consumers out there and learn how they actually buy wine, package is a massive part of that decision making. There's a lot of room for improvement in competitions to help the consumers, I think. Uh, there is some, so consumers, one aspect they want is package, and they want to feel like part of uh, a brand that is representing, based on the package, what they want. But at the same time, they want reassurance that the purchase they're making is a good one. That's, to me, why points are important to consumers because they make a decision based on package or style or varietal or whatever they want and price and they go oh good it got 91 points that reaffirms that I'm making a good choice and I think having a gold medal on a wine can help reassure that consumer but I think there's more room for competitions to improve their uh, their relatability to the consumer and uh, it's getting better but I think uh, it still needs improvement Oh, God, this is the thing. I love all wine. Uh, I, I don't put my nose up to anything. And I think it's important, especially for wine experts, to not pull, put their nose up to anything. Last night, I drank a beautiful 20-year-old Bordeaux. But the night before that, I drank a, a Kerner from Northern Italy. And I, and I love them both. One was very complex and old. The other one was just a beautiful, pleasurable drink to have. I honestly, I drink everything.